Well, look at me playing Spore again. Who knew? I did a little bit of time watching on my channel and kind of come to the conclusion that this is what y'all want to see. <laughs> I am not getting very many views on my other videos and I'd like to kind of crank those up a bit, so I figured I'd give another run at Spore, especially considering that I learned a lot about the game since then. Uh, quite a bit of uh, more depth to this game than you would really honestly imagine there, so I'm going to do a run that's not focused on omnivore, carnivore, or whatever. I'm going to do a run focused on what sort of class, uh, philosophy, that I want to be in the space stage. And for this particular run, I'm going to be going for the scientist, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But one of the other things that I'm going to be going for is to actually find some purpose and meaning in this game because it's fun, but honestly when you get to the space stage it does sort of seem to crawl and all you really have to do is to find stuff, you know? And, and what I'm going to be going for is I'm actually going to try to find the planet Earth. Yes, the planet Earth does exist in this game. So, having watched the videos on uh, finding Earth in Spore, um, the information that I got suggests that it's the arm one over from the shortest arm in the galaxy, which would apparently be this one. I can't be positive. I have no idea of knowing if I'm right or not. But that um, this particular arm right here would su be suggested to be the one that has Earth in it, so I want to start close to that. So um, I'm going to be really danking the hell out of Spore here. This is this might be just called Let's Dank Spore, but the idea here is that there's much more to the game than initially thought, and more ways to get more out of it by just using systems in it. So, let's go ahead and begin. We got one red-ass planet and one green and blue-ass planet. I'll go with the green and blue-ass one. We're gonna start off uh, this time as a carnivore, and uh, it will become more clear why we're choosing the paths we're choosing as time goes on. I'm probably uh, going to be covering, as a portion of things, what happens when you take each particular stage as a certain type of thing. Um, to kind of give you an idea of how the system works, when you do herbivorous things, when you do things that are considered the peaceful route, then that counts as a green card. Okay, the green means that you've done something that is considered to be good. Then there's the red, which is, uh, in this case, would be the carnivore color, and that inherently means something that you've done that's wicked or selfish. And so every choice that you make in the game uh, affects that card that you get at the end of the stage and affects how you move on to the next. But um, it's not just what happens in the next stage after. Then, of course, there's the omnivore card, which is blue, and you're kind of moderate and in the middle. So how you choose your philosophy for when you enter the space stage depends upon what combination of cards that you get and sometimes what order that you get. So the way that you can become a scientist in this game, which again, there's a very good reason for that, is by having two red cards, one green and one blue. And I like to do it in the standard of RRGB, meaning first red, second red, third green, uh, and then fourth blue. And then that way you, um, actually no, I'm sorry, scientist is RRBB. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pull open the file that uh, tells what perks there are, and I'm going to drag it on screen here. Now I'm hoping everybody can read it. I might as well get to it here. These are the perks you get from doing each stage by a certain color. So when you get to space stage, if you did any one of these particular stages with, let's say, a green card or a red card or a blue card, you will get that that special feature. So the special thing you get from making it to space stage and taking the cell, cell stage as a red is you get an increase in your weapon effectiveness. Uh, when you do the creature stage, then increases ship health and tribal stage discounts on combat tools and finally in civilization stage decrease the chance of getting attacked by pirates. Now, RRBB equals scientist, so that means that you are going to get a scientist if you go with two red cards and two blue cards. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in, actually, but I chose this path because I would like an increase in weapon effectiveness, I would like increased ship health, I would like discounts on colonization tools, and I would like increased spice production. 
As you can see here, there's benefits to doing any one of these things anyways. And part of the reason why I choose scientist is also because the special weapon ability thingy that you get is a it's an attack that will essentially, not essentially, it will wipe out an entire planet. It doesn't blow up the planet or anything, but it wipes out all the cities on an entire planet. So when you're trying to go to war, and you got a big old nasty T3 that you got to mow through, then that's going to take care of it for you. So hope you got a good look at this list of uh, the perks that you get. Um, this is pretty much the rewards that you get for completing these stages in this fashion. As you can see here, I'm going for RRBB. So the first R is the carnivore. Now, um, since these are going to be scientists, and yes, I'm doing normal again, goddamn you all, um, then I'm going to go ahead and try to, um, you know what, I'll just leave the planet name as it is for right now, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get on into it. So, as usual, we start off with the asteroid coming to the planet. I'll go ahead and, and let this uh, whole thing be just... Yeah, I'll, I'll go over the whole series again, because there's some folks that may have picked up on my first Spore Herb before playthrough, which was literally my first actual video on YouTube, as far as me trying to put something up. And I remember talking about the Philae Probe and shit at this point. You know what? This is going to be about the game now. This is going to be all about the mechanics of the game. And I'm going to go ahead and sit through every one of these uh, little cutscenes that comes up, because this might be actually some of some folks' first time joining me. And hopefully, you know, if uh, if I get some of my adherents back, because I've actually gained a couple followers here, you know, I'm kind of just broken past the 25 mark, and they all seem to want to be watching me play Spore, so let's get on it. Go ahead and gobble up that meat. Now, um, when I went ahead and started this particular playthrough, I had several planets already made up, and I just went ahead and deleted those, because you know what? Easy come, easy go in this game. And I also wanted to make it so that when the achievements occurred, that they actually popped up badges on the screen. You can almost completely reset something uh, on this game just by deleting the pollination package, which can be found in your app data folder, if you look hard enough. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to go ahead and just get those badges to show up again, then all you have to do is go in and delete your pollination.package folder. So this is just going to be a 100% um, you know, meat-eating run through the cell stage here. And I'm not going to try to do anything too terribly fancy, you know. Um, just going for the usual. Get my jaw mouth. Come on. There we go. Eat that little fucker. Other cells in meteor bits are the key to finding new parts. Each part has unique abilities that can benefit. When you see the new part appear, swim over to the token to collect it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to really bother with using the spikes for this stage, um, because again, I'm, I'm a carnivore and I've got a weapon on the front of my face here. Ooh, that guy dealt me a little damage. Come on, come on. Ooh, yeah, you had, you, you had second thoughts about that, I see. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and of course, another benefit of redoing Spore to a certain extent this way is that I get to actually clear out a lot more of my coughs and throat clearings, and that's something that bugged me that in my first series I did that. Oh my god, get away. Fuck off. Alright, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need to get some uh, enhanced equipment here. God, stop it. They all want me dead. Oof, that broke things up. Okay. So, yep. Cell stage. Getting my, uh, getting my red card for doing the, uh, for doing it as a meat eater, and, you know, that means that I'm going to get a boost to ship health, and that's going to be useful because we're going to be in aggressive, nasty sons of bitch races. Uh, it's going to be real... Oh my god, these guys, it's, it's all about chasing me today, isn't it? Uh, we're, we're just going to be real nasty bastards that don't care about anybody but ourselves. So, yep, let's go ahead and get this party started, right? Just trying to uh, get my good stuff together here. Let me go ahead and try killing this guy. Hey, god damn you! Alright, now the tables have turned, motherfucker. That's right. Okay, so let's see if I can manage to get one of these guys in my trap. Excellent. I was hoping for that. Let's just see about stinging one more. No, I can't do it. Alright, well, I've got more than enough to go ahead and apply the jet. You know I love me some jet. May 
waiting time. Awesome. Okay, so uh, here we begin our first little bit of customization here. Drop the flagella, put on the jet. Let me increase my mouth size. And um, these things fuck them. Let me go ahead and put on the BDI just because it's a little bit more convenient for me. And uh, for the color, I think I'm gonna go ahead and side with a purpley sort of a thing. What does this look like? Good enough. Okay, let's name the species. It is Scientician. Oh, if I could spell. Yeah, me and my originality, right? Okay. So, back to the grind. Just uh, another one of my cell stage playthroughs here. And, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get our shit. Chop that up, and I think I'll go ahead and kill a little bit, because why not? More for the money. Uh, most of the uh, cool stuff that I figured out how to do really doesn't come into play until the space stage, although there's ways to play uh, the other stages fairly easily as well. So, alright, now you know I, who I have to go after. These fin bastards here. I want their part. Oh, hello. You seem to be f coming into my little path here. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to eat your way out of this. Bam. Awesome. Okay. Want to go ahead and apply that part. And I'm quite certain that there's going to be out there somewhere a poison part for me to pick up. So, you know, I'm going to play my usual thing. I, I just happen to feel like this is the best way to get through the cell stage without too much hassle. You know, put on the poison, and that way you are damn near impregnable. Ooh, this is... This is a little ugly fuck off you. That's right. That's what happens when you take on the Reaper. Alright. It's pretty cool that the omnivores there, they still leave the dead body for you to uh, enjoy the meaty goodness. And I'll just go ahead and take advantage of this moment to get the omnivore mouth. Not that I'm going to use it, but you know me in completion. Not going to be paying as much attention to the parts, honestly, uh, because the um, because the creature stage is going to be a lot more about just uh, finishing it up with a decent look. And of course, the uh, creature stage, if you're going for a more, shall we say, aggressive playthrough, then the parts don't honestly matter as much because you're going to mostly be doing strike and a little bit of poison, and you just need some speed. So. You know, you can play it more loosey-goosey, hang, hang loose and hang free. Of course, the downside is always that you have to be wary of the fact that many nests will not be possessive of enough critters to give you your quota to actually clear them. So I'm going to try to just buzz through these stages as quickly as possible here. Might as well go ahead and get our hands on this part, and yay, completist. See, I, I just like having those little accomplishments pop up there. So, awesome. Uh, yeah, I think I have enough to do the poison, so out of my way, motherfuckers. Beat it. There we go. I'll skip through shit we've already seen. Apply our little poison pumps, and uh, away we go. And, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the stage as soon as I'm done here. Alright, so get on it, get on it, kill some shit, take a hit. That's okay. Gotta, gotta spend money to make money. Speaking of money, I'm broke as fuck. Uh, still not brave enough to try and put my uh, Patreon link up. I don't know as I'm going to uh, be perceived well or not for that, and, you know, perception's half of the game. I'm not literally going after this to make money, I just want to go ahead and you know, just try to get some viewership and, and share some of my uh, experiences in the games with folks. Uh, Bloodborne came out, that's really cool. Also, um, the new DX11 version of Dark Souls 2 came out, A Scholar of the First Sin, and that's pretty cool. I went ahead and bought that. You get a really good deal on that. If you already own Dark Souls 2, then it's just a uh, $20 upgrade to the DX11 version, and it comes with all the add-on content, so that's a really good deal if you uh, had already owned Dark Souls 2 and you wanted to just upgrade. So, yeah, I'm also quite uh, happy to see Marcus and Franz 
back doing their thing. Uh, it's been a long time, and I know they did a lot of hard work. Uh, what with the um, the Bloodborne strategy guide, just like they did in the days leading up to the Dark Souls 2 release, they did a lot of work on that, and you know, came at the expense of their YouTube channelers. But you know, we're all happy as shit to see them back. Especially, you know, I'm I'm of course happy to see Franz back. Uh, but not so much as Marcus, because we had a whole ton of Franz uh, in the interim there. Marcus has been gone for considerably longer than Franz has been gone, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see Spy back. Fucking hell, that's karma for talking shit about Spy, right? I'm happy to see Spy back, uh, too. Uh, he's been gone, actually, a uh, fair amount of time, but not as long as Marcus. There's, y You never have people really asking, you know, is Spy dead? No, you have, it's always, is Marcus dead? <laughs> uh, but I enjoy both their playthrough styles. Spy has a much more, um, much more uh, analytic approach to the game. He has a little bit more insight into, uh, just, you know, the philosophy of the game making there. Not that Marcus doesn't have that as well, but he just feels a lot more like somebody who's playing the game and loving it and having fun with it. So, you know, I watch them both and I love watching them both and, and they're just both for different reasons. And, and it's, pretty cool, you know, that, that they're friends anyways. I mean, they n not necessarily hang out with each other, because obviously Marcus lives in America and Franz lives in, in Germany, but you know, it's just nice to think that the uh, the folks that you watch on the internet playing the games that you enjoy are, you know, hanging out with each other. It's, it's just a nice thing to see. So if I can get away from this guy, then I'll be able to finish up the cell stage with some dignity. Let me go after this prey species right here. This is my meat. Fuck you. Oh my god, you little robber. There you go. See, that's what happens when you take on the Poison Reaper. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Take, take me on from behind. See how well that works out for you. Alright, let me just gobble this one up. Yoink. Oh, they don't count for shit. Okay. There we go. Here comes Brain. Yeah. That feels good, don't it? Mm-hmm. Congratulations, you're on the path to sentience. Awesome, so let's go ahead and take this opportunity. So as you can see, the path led us to being a carnivore, which is uh, embodied by this red card here. And uh, your benefit in the creature stage for getting Carnivore is you got the Raging Roar, which will uh, kind of get enemies off your ass. And as you move along, you get more things as a Carnivore. Uh, sorry, as the um, in the Tribal stage, you get traps and so on and so forth. So as you can see, our reward for when we get to the Space stage is that we have an increase in the effectiveness of our weapons. So that's going to be really good. So we're going to just go ahead and... Uh, get our achievement and get on to land. And before we do that, we are going to design our critter. Now, uh, I've got a little, little hunch that I'm going to test here, and the, my hunch is that um, it might be a good idea to go ahead and glut yourself on parts in this particular portion of things. Just put all the shit on, because that may mean you get more as you start out. Now, um, my creature is going to be a bit of a fleshy, bulbous sort of a creature. Good, good. And uh, let's go ahead and select a look for him. I like the purple look. Partially because it looks nice, and partially because purple shows up very well on the map when you're trying to determine your nation from the others. So let's go with the Brawnysaurus leg and uh, just make that a little bit wider, a little bit thicker, because these are going to be some uh, fairly corpulent looking guys. Alright, going to go ahead and put on my meat eating mouth, and try to hide the poison a little bit here. Shrink it down, and then bring that up there, and whew, that's a little bit much, okay. And then we're going to stick back with the beady eyes, hello world, how you do? And let's just stick more parts on, you know? Just put them on, put them on, spend all our parts here, and then, you know, I have the suspicion that when we go into the later stages, we might just actually have the possibility that we'll get more DNA points for having these on. So, 
We're starting off at zero. We completely spent them all. I'm curious to see how many DNA points we have to spend once we're in. So let's save and exit. And we will go up to our dry land home. I am pretty sure I took off all of the spore mods uh, before this. I'm not. I, I, I think I'm pretty sure that this is not the. Uh, this is not a background that comes from a mod. So I'm going just pure spore right now. Spore mods are fun. Uh, they can really uh, make things more interesting. But you know, purists. Hey everybody, come on up. There's oxygen. on shore. Alright. It is the beginning of a new day, and for you, a whole new strange and wondrous world. Air fills your lungs as you stretch into your limbs in your new home, dry land. The race to evolve has begun. So, thus is the beginning of our journey into the uh, dankier version of Spore, so yeah, I'll call it Let's Dank Spore Scientist. I am Solonis Dracone. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening.